Hi everybody and welcome to this short video on a new feature that has shown up in Wireshark. This new feature is available in Wireshark 3.4.0 and onwards. And it's all about this wonderful feature that we got where we could add little buttons here to our display filters. So quick ways to put a, a filter that you would use all the time in a button, but it's taken this to sort of the next level where you can nest these buttons and group them. And I want to show you how this works. It's really interesting and really fun, and it changes the whole way that you do profiles and how you can configure Wireshark. In fact, we've been updating a bunch of the profiles in the profile repository, which I'll link in the description below, with this new feature because I think it really adds a lot of power to your profile. So let me illustrate how it works. You'll just get sort of a feel for this and I urge you to sort of follow along if you can. All right, so again, 3.4.0 and onwards, what we're gonna do here is start a very quick little capture on the ethernet interface. Okay, I'm just gonna let this run for a moment or two. This is our default profile, so nothing special. We have three, uh, areas, three different panes here. The top pane is the packet capture screen where we're just seeing this scrolling away. The center is the actual packet information. So I can expand this. When I select a packet, I could expand each area. And then the packet bytes are shown on the bottom. Now, there's another feature that I put just recently uh, on YouTube, which is about how you can use the packet diagram feature, and I'll put a link to that in the description as well. All right, so let's stop the packet capture here. I've got enough that I can mess with now, I believe. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is I have a combination of IPv4 and IPv6 packets here. So if I wanted to just look at IPv6, I could just type this up here in the display filter. I can say IPv6 and hit enter, and now I'm filtering out everything except the IPv6 traffic. Now, if this is a feature that I'm going to use a lot, and I'm, let's say, creating an IPv6 profile, what I would want to do is, first of all, go down here to the profile and say, create a new profile, and I don't know, we'll call it new IPv6, something like that, and say OK. All right, so now I can start to modify this. Now, maybe this IPv6 filter, I would add somewhere where I can get access to it all the time. Originally, in the old versions of Wireshark, we would add this to the bookmark list, right? We would say, save this filter. If it didn't already exist, we would put it in that filter list. Or in subsequent versions or newer versions of Wireshark, we could add this filter as a button, right? So we click the little plus over here and we get a little entry area. There's the filter. That's the same syntax. I can put a label. We can say IPv6 and, and then we can even put a comment here. IPv6 packets only, something like that. And say, okay, and now there it is, right? So if I clear this filter and I just wanted to filter for IPv6, I just click this button and now, first of all, the syntax is typed in there and second of all, it's applied. So it's one click versus multiple clicks and typing and just saves a whole bunch of time. All right, so let's expand this out a little bit better just so it makes better room and we'll make the font a little bit bigger too. There we go. All right, so again, all of those changes are being written to this profile. Now, Let's say that I'm interested in certain IPv6 packet types. Now, IPv6 uses something called ICMPv6. So that might be something else we would filter for, right? ICMPv6. And again, I'm typing that filter, click enter, that applies the filter, and then we see all these different types of IPv6 packets. And maybe I'd like to add that. There we go. So let's add this as ICMPv6. And we've got the filter syntax already. These are ICMPv6 packets only, something like that. Okay. So again, those comments, when, when you add that, if you hover on the uh, particular button, you'll see whatever you type in there will be shown. Okay. So this is really nothing super new at this point. However, let's go a little bit further. So let's say that I'm interested in a particular type of ICMPv6 packet. Then I would have to say dot type 
and then equals equals and I have to put in a type number so let's choose 134 now I happen to know that type 134 are router advertisements so look at this right I've typed that in there and there we go I've got these router type advertisements Okay, so again, maybe I want to create a filter with this. So I hit the plus button and we'll say RA for router advertisement, right? So these are, oops, router advertisements. And we'll click OK. So, so we now have a button for IPv6. We have a button for ICMPv6. And now we have a button for router advertisement. And we can continue this. There are other variations of the type as well. For example, right, one of them could be the router solicitation messages. Now, there may not be any of these. These are type 133. So let's put 133 here. Yeah, we don't have any, but we could still add this as a button, right? And we could say these are router solicitation messages. There we go. And now we have a button for router solicitation messages. Let's add just two more. Uh, there's also something called neighbor advertisement, which is type 136. Let's see if there's any there. Nope, there's no advertisements there, but that's okay. We'll add this as a button. So these are neighbor advertisements. and say okay. And then the last one that I want to add is neighbor solicitation messages, which are type 135s. Okay, so let's change this. And unfortunately, we don't have any of those either, but if we let the capture go longer, we would have. Let's add that as well. So this is neighbor solicitations. So we could go on and on and on, identifying all these different packet types that can exist in IPv6. And you know, then we click on the button and it filters for those particular packets. We could also colorize these and all sorts of other things as well. That's not the point of the video. The point of the video is to show you that this can get actually ugly. In fact, we could add so many things here that this window continues to shrink down and shrink down and shrink down and shrink down. And the next thing you know, you've got all these buttons and very little room to actually type syntax okay so this is where we can now sort of embed these things with each other and the way that you do this and and it would sort of make sense to do this right that if we had under icmpv6 maybe a drop down where we would have these different icmp type messages so let's go edit this to show you how it's done and the way you do this is you go to edit and then into preferences OK, and you'll see here there's an option to select filter buttons and there you go. You see the button label and this is another place, by the way, you can very quickly add these and, of course, edit them. But you see the button label, you see the filter expressions that I typed and you see the comments. OK, now to nest these, what we need to do is we need to do this. What we're going to do is we're going to edit the button label the button label, watch this. So I'm gonna double click this RA here and then use my left arrow to go in front. And then I'm gonna say ICMP V6 and I'm gonna put the double slash like that. Now I'm also gonna select this before I hit enter. I'm gonna say control C to copy it. And then I'm gonna put it in front of the other buttons and paste it and paste it and paste it. So what has happened here? If I say OK, you'll notice my screen changed up here. And now I have that ICMP title with a little downward arrow. And if I click that arrow, there we see router advertisement, router solicitation, neighbor advertisement, neighbor solicitation. So they've now been grouped underneath ICMPv6. Now you can see ICMPv6 is out here as well. I should probably fix that as well so that I could just filter for ICMPv6. But there you go. That is how it works, right? And so it's a very simple process. If I can go back to the edit preferences, it's a very simple process of changing those filter buttons, changing the label 
to include that double slash, right? So let's put it actually here and uh, I'll paste it. It's still in my clipboard. There we go and hit enter and OK. And now I've cleaned it up, right? Because now we have just plain ICMPv6 and then we have the router advertisements under that. So that makes it, I think, really, really simple to clean up. And of course, this reduces the amount of space that you need taking away from the actual syntax. Now, I want to show you, uh, if you take this sort of to the full level, I want to show that to you. I've got a profile here, which I'm going to switch to. I'm going to click on profile and I'm going to go to my super IPv6 profile. Let's see, here it is right here. And look at this, right? So this is the same packet capture. I just changed the profile. Notice I've got some items under IPv6. I've got some items under next header. So I can find packets that are carrying TCP, find packets that are carrying UDP, etc. There's my ICMP. Now here, I just look for general ICMP and redirects. For me, logically, to look for router advertisements, it just belongs under IPv6 rather than ICMP. So I just did it that way. However, ICMP errors are important. So I have the different ICMP errors. I can look for those. I mean, you just imagine this saves so much time and it's all right here, right? I don't need to go to my bookmark list and go crazy looking in the bookmark list. It's all right here, literally one or two clicks and I get exactly what I want. If I want to find tunnels, I even have security. If you want to grab this profile, it's out at the profile repository. As I said, I've put a link to that in the description, but that is how you leverage this new feature in Wireshark, and I encourage everybody to do so. I encourage you to, to take this and apply this to whatever profiles you already have, and if you don't have enough, go get some at the profile repository. All right, I hope you enjoyed this explanation of exactly how this feature works. I hope you use this like I have already started to do all over my profiles, and I'll see you again in another video. And remember, capture every day. Thanks for watching.